What's up everyone? Today we're going to talk about booleans and curved surfaces in Blender. Uh, specifically we're going to work with a sphere in this one. So I'm actually going to be using vanilla workflow for this just to one, appease everyone, two, show just the generic way to do it um, without you know any shortcuts. So what we're going to do is start with a basic cube and whenever I'm working with spherical surfaces I always like to use a quad sphere. So that way it's um, not only is it consisting of quads and there's not any pinching in the top, it's also an actual perfect sphere. So what we can do to make that is take the cube, press control 4, and yeah control 4 should be enough for now. We'll go ahead and shade it smooth and then we'll go and apply the subsurf. Next we need to cast it to a sphere because if we look at it from an ortho view, um, it's, it's skewed. It's not a perfect sphere. It's not perfectly round. So we're going to add a cast modifier, change it to sphere, and put a factor of 1, not 10, 1. And now it's a perfect sphere. You can see the difference before and after uh, much better. Anyway, so now what we have is this piece here. And goodness, I was messing with my settings earlier. I cannot deal with Blender's default vertex size. Way too small for me. So we'll do 7 for that. Okay, so usually when you do booleans in a curved surface, you want a fairly dense sphere. Uh, this is probably a good middle ground right here to kind of discuss all the intricacies behind it. So I'm going to just put a hole directly in the front, maybe the top right quadrant or something, and we'll use a cylinder for that. So I'm going to just add in a basic cylinder here. Let's give it some uh, smooth shading, auto smooth, and then, what are we at, 32 verts by default? Yeah, that should be fine. So. Rotate this 90 degrees, put it up here somewhere, scale it, and that should be good enough. So now we can just run a Boolean difference operation. I'll turn on screencast keys so people can see what I'm doing. Okay, so now we have this. The shading looks terrible. Obviously, that's not a big deal. We're going to take care of that. So maybe I'll move this out a bit so it's not so far indented right about here. And you're going to see the shading's pretty terrible. It's really easy if we. Um, shade smooth the cylinder which we did and then turn on auto smooth for the cylinder as well Okay, so we have this and it's non-destructive. So we're just going to apply the boolean modifier And this is basically what we have right here Now this is a good situation of a good even amount of geo on both the sphere and on the cylinder What you want is the amount of vertices on the sphere to roughly match the amount of vertices that are around your cylinder and let me show you why this is so important. Make sure you pay specific attention here. Okay, so this is a mech I was working on. I'm probably going to have to redo the head part because of this specific issue. So you're going to encounter it and you need to remember, uh, just keep this in the back of your mind. So take a look at the density of the main sphere here. Not super dense, that's the first mistake I made. I should have probably made it one subdivision higher. Two, the cylinder I used to cut out has way more vertices. In fact, it was a 64 vert cylinder and it has way more vertices than the actual sphere has, so it's really hard to control the shading. And let's go back to our initial example and see how it's different. You can see we have roughly the same amount of vertices going around the cylinder as we do vertices making up the sphere here. It looks, it looks like it all fuses nice together. It looks like it's nice and even. So think less about the amount, just if it doesn't look even, like right here, this looks super uneven. You immediately, your eye goes right to these vertices here. Way too many compared to the amount of verts on the main sphere. Whereas here, it looks roughly even, not to mention we're gonna be merging some of these vertices anyways. Now, this is mostly intuition here. So I'm trying to convert my intuition to an actual tutorial. So hopefully it's making sense so far. Uh, anyways, what I'm gonna do now is clean up the shading here. After we add a bevel, of course, because it's hard surface, we want bevels. So I'm going to show you how to clean up the shading with a good example, a good even example like this. And then I'm going to show you two common mistakes and examples that kind of destroy this type of cutout. Okay, so first things first, with a cutout like this, you want to merge all the near miss verts. So the ones that are super close to each other, get rid of those guys right off the bat. So anyone that values their time would run a Boolean cleanup <laughs> with a mesh machine way quicker that way. but um, you know, I don't want to sound too cocky or anything. I understand, I really do understand that there are situations which people genuinely can't get an add-on. Um, just for the most part, when you can invest in one, it's worth it, I promise. Uh, but I'm going to just show you, if you don't have a mesh machine, 
Unfortunately, your only option is to go in here and start sliding vertices manually. And once again, the vertex sliding is mostly an intuition thing as well that you kind of see the more you work with these types of cutouts. So I'm going to go in here and merge that at last. So you can just see it's a pretty easy process here. We just got to start merging things. And I don't want to disrupt the curvature too much, so uh, you got to be careful with it. So, you know, it's sometimes kind of a, um, a fun experience. It's, it's like, uh, you ever seen those videos where people do like those super satisfying cake cuts or whatever? It's kind of the same thing when you start merging verts and cleaning this up. It's just a, it just feels satisfying. I don't know what it is. Maybe just because it's a little bit more um, aesthetically pleasing. So, like I said, this is just mostly an intuition type of thing. You just merge where it makes sense, right? And eventually, the more you work with these types of cuts, you'll discover what makes sense and what doesn't. And there's still some situations in which it's like a, a hit or miss. You might be moving to the wrong vert, you might not. Uh, but in general, you want something like this, where it's you know somewhat clean, doesn't have to be perfect though. Okay, so this looks pretty good, but I can already tell the bevel is going to go crazy when we add one, simply because the bevel needs a little bit of room to you know round across. And some of these vertices, like this one, the bevel is just going to hit this one, it's way too close. So what we can also do is just kind of help that before the issue actually exists, move some of these around, and this one's going to be an issue. Uh, we'll deal with it on a case-by-case -case basis, but for now, we're going to get in here and add a bevel modifier set to angle. Three segments is usually what I go with. Um, you can harden the normals to make it a little bit cleaner and turn off clamp. Just um, put the bevel right to where you want it to be. In general, we don't need a crazy high bevel, just enough to capture the reflection, so right around here should be okay. So after adding the bevel and moving and merging the vertices around, you can see the shading here looks pretty good. Never trust the default studio shading though. Always go to a reflective matte cap like the car paint. This is one of the, the, the cliche matte caps you go to. And you can really start to see shading breaks as you go around. Now this one here, I think that's a shadow if we turn off shadows. Yeah, that's just a shadow. Be careful of those because they can get a little bit tricky. But if we look at steep angles, you can see the shading starts to break around the bevel. And the fact of the matter is, if you have end gons, there's no way to get those end gons to have perfect shading. There's only a way to manage the shading by pulling in those end gons really, really close to the bevel so it's barely noticeable. In my opinion, if you're doing a render from a distance and you can't see the shading errors in the final render, I personally think that is fine. I've done it before and you can never notice them. If you want to do it the proper way and actually have perfect shading, this is what you should do. So the shading errors are much more constrained, obviously, but we want to get it to be perfect with no errors at all. So what we're going to do is actually add in another quad sphere. We're going to add in a cube, press Control 4 because that's what we had before. We'll shade it smooth. We can apply the subsurf, and then same thing we did at the beginning, we're going to add a cast modifier set to a factor of 1. Uh, of course set to sphere and now you're going to see we have the exact same general shape here so what we can actually do is we can take the normal information of this sphere and transfer it over in vanilla blender so the perfectly smooth shading that we have on this sphere we can transfer directly over to the sphere with the boolean with a bad shading around the boolean super easy process all we need to do we'll just hide the sphere here we'll go to the one with the boolean all we need to do is either apply our bevel. I would recommend actually going in here and beveling manually. I just find the controls a little bit easier. So we're actually going to go in here and bevel manually. You have to go destructive for these bevels. So we're going to press Control B, and you can give this as many segments as you want. It doesn't really matter. We'll just ramp that up. And if you want, you can clean up the vertices some more to make it less warped if, um, if that's what you want to do. It's not really a big deal, though. Okay, now what we want to do is go into face mode and alt click the first bevel segment of our bevel. And then we're going to press control plus on the number pad maybe like two or three times. And then we're going to press alt shift click and deselect all the beveled areas. We don't want to transfer the normals on the bevel, it's not going to work. So this is roughly the area we want to have here selected. So now what we can do is go over to the vertex data panel and just assign a vertex group really easy we just want to make sure these are the faces that select in the vertex group next this is the final step we're going to go to add modifier 
data transfer, we're going to transfer from this sphere right here. So in this case, it's called cube 001. We're going to go to this third option down. Let me drag this out. Custom normals, and then we're going to go to projected face interpolated. Now, if we go into object mode, it's going to look really, really weird. That's because we need to make sure we select the vertex group that we just made. So now we've transferred that uh, smoothing information from that last sphere, and now the shading is absolutely flawless. There is no error at all. So like I said, I think this is a bit overkill if you can't see any shading errors and you're rendering from a distance, but this is an option if you want to get perfect shading. Now let me quickly show you two examples that uh, people commonly make when they're doing booleans and spheres, one of which I already showed you at the beginning of the video. Okay, so first one I showed you is pretty obvious. Let's, um, let me go back to a regular mat cap. Let's add a cube this time. We'll press, I don't know, we'll do a really low amount of geometry for this one. So control three for a subsurf with three subdivisions. Shade it smooth. Uh, apply the subsurf. We'll cast it to a sphere. And now you're going to see that we have a sphere here, but it's really, really low in terms of mesh density. I see a lot of people take these low density spheres and then use a cutter with an insane amount of vertices. So like I've seen people go up to like 80 or something crazy. And this is basically what I showed at the beginning of the video. So if you try to cut this, you know, we'll run a difference Boolean. We'll apply the Boolean and we'll just turn on auto smooth here. So check this out. We have way more vertices around the cutter than we do to help constrain the shading on the base of the sphere. So now trying to manage these shading errors is going to be super hard because rather than having a lot of vertices around here to work with, we have pretty much an uneven amount of verts. So the shading is going to be a lot harder to constrain. So this is issue number one, low mesh density on the source object, high mesh density on the cutter object. That's a big no-no. So another common mistake I see people make is the exact opposite. High mesh density on the curved object, really low mesh density on the cutter object. So let's add a cube here and maybe we'll do control five. So one more than we did before. We'll go ahead and shade it smooth, turn on auto smooth and then apply the subsurf, cast it to a sphere. The usual stuff we've been doing. So we have a pretty good amount of vertices in here. You know, it's um, a lot more than we had before. So some people will do this, and then what they'll do is they'll take their cutter object, like a cylinder, and have something insanely low, like, I don't know, 16 vertices or something low. So we'll rotate this 90 degrees and, you know, use this as a cutter object. We'll go in here, and we'll just go ahead and apply the Boolean. And this is another issue people make. So Although it looks like the vertices are pretty even, it's really obvious because we have this stepping error. We have a really jagged cut in the sphere here, and um, it just doesn't look good. It doesn't look round at all. It looks steppy. So like I said earlier, the most important thing when working with spheres is to match the mesh density of the source object with the cutter object. So make them as even as possible. Don't have any sort of bias in terms of mesh density. So if you're going to go with a really low mesh density um, sphere like this, so we'll just do the usual thing if we don't have that much geo in here, then do the same thing with your cutter. Let me cast this. So with your cutter, have roughly the same idea, low mesh density on the cutter. So in this case, you know, 16 or maybe like, I don't know, 24 might work okay. And then when we actually do a cut, Sorry, this is taking so long, but I want to make sure I'm showcasing. So now you can see everything is roughly matched. It is a little bit jaggedy, but overall the sphere is as well because it's not that dense. And same idea for a much more detailed sphere cut, you know, something like this. Your cutter should have something a lot higher, like 60 to 80 verts to match the uh, general smoothness of your sphere. I'm not going to do it again. You get the point. So hopefully this video makes sense. Uh, I tried to explain the intuition as much as I could with examples here. If you have any questions at all, post them in the comments. I'll try to clarify everything. So hopefully this now makes sense for how you can work with Booleans on curved surfaces, constrain the shading errors, and actually transfer normals if you want perfect shading. Obviously there are exceptions to everything. There might be a situation in which something I said here 
doesn't work perfectly, but that's a case by case basis. Uh, and at that point, the intuition is going to kick in and it'll make sense. So um, yeah, this is basically all you need to know about curved surfaces and Booleans. If you watch this video, I guarantee you, you're going to be good to go with hard surface uh, on curved surfaces. So that's about it. If you do want to get mesh machine, however, remember when I discussed earlier, having to merge verts is really annoying to do manually and you just want to do it in one click. Um, I've dropped an affiliate link to Mesh Machine in the description, so if you do choose to buy that, um, it'll help support me as well. I use it all the time. So uh, yeah, anyways, hope the video helped, and I'll see you in the next one.